Hello my lovely Floss Tube friends, welcome back to the channel, a very warm welcome to you all and a welcome to 2024. Now, this is the first time that I'm seeing you in the new year, so you know, I hope you all had a lovely festive season and that you had a lovely new year. I know I am not at the end of January, so today is the 28th of January, so I'm a little bit ahead of schedule, which is, that's new, that's new because normally I'm late for my monthly updates. This time we're gonna roll early, but only because I am away from Thursday to Sunday this coming week, because um, I'm off to crew to have a stitchy long weekend with my my very dear ladies, which I am so excited about. So because I'm not gonna be here to do the monthly update then, rather than let it run later, and then it'll end up being a monthly update for January in the middle of February, I thought I would go ahead of time. So here we are, what to tell you all, what, what have I done since we last spoke? So since I last spoke to you at the end of December with my whip parade and my plans for 2024, my whip go 2024 is off and running at full pace and loving every minute of that. I have been to the January Essex Needle Stitch Day, uh, which was on the 13th of January, met up with the ladies, it was a glorious day. Um, I did actually manage to get some stitching done, which is like un unheard of for me, especially at a stitch day, when it's only a day. By the time I've done all of the chatting and the sorting and the arranging, along with Ellie, um, we don't normally get actually that much stitching done. But then I sit there and say that, but I don't actually get that much stitching done, done at a full weekend because I'm too busy chatting. So, I'm oh, sorry, I've got a hair stuck. On my lipstick. So I hung out with the ladies at the Stitch Day. I had a glorious time. It was lovely. I didn't record because it was only a day. Um, yeah, there's just not enough hours in the day for that. I did do a little bit of purchasing, but not massively. So I will show you the whole stuff at the end of this video. Um, so like I say, I've been off to a Stitch Day, which was very well needed. And yeah, it was lovely to catch up with the ladies post Christmas. We had a blast, it was absolutely lovely. So, what have I been working on since the last time we spoke? So, it's it's all go here. You know when you're sort of sitting there thinking, oh, this is gonna be a real short, sharp and sweet video, because although I've stitched, I've, 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 I've focused. Rather than do a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of this and a bit of that, I've, I've been much more dedicated and focused, which is one of the things that I'm gonna try to do um, for 2024 as part of my plans. Hence the reason why I reduced down the number of whips. It's not that I've UFO'd them, as I said in my plans video, they're just up in the cupboards behind me, out the way, and I've honed in what I'm gonna stitch in 2024 with the option that if I get a line in 2024 on my whip go, I have the option to do some switching if, if I so wish. So I've made my plans very flexible, but one of the things that I am gonna try and do is be a bit more focused on the number of projects that I stitch on. So if I pull a project out, I'm gonna try and stitch on it for a number of days and just let me, you know, if I, if I wanna stitch on it, I'm gonna stitch on it. If I get bored of it, I'm gonna put it away and then I'll get something else out. As long as I can stay on track with the whip go and they're the only restrictions that I have I'm hoping that by the end of the year I should hopefully hopefully see more progress per project instead of lots of little bits of progress on lots and lots of projects that's that's the aim of the game but hey we have a whole year to see how this goes um so what have I been stitching on in the month of January I hear you say so as we are in the winter and it is cold and it is chilly, of course it makes total sense that the first project that came out was my Afghan, the Family Farm Afghan by Witch Elk. This one is being stitched, I'll say now, I've got my notes over here, so I'm, I'm looking over here so I don't forget. So the Afghan, the Afghan is being stitched on 18 count fireside linen. And it's being stitched four, four strands over two fabric threads. And I love it because it's like a huge great blanket. I mean, they're, they're, you can see it's still as unruly as it was. 
I have surged the edges to the best of my ability, she says, famous last words. So here is the progress. And I've got to say, I've, yeah, I've had a blast on this. So my Afghan actually only got two days of stitching. And I think I stitched on this between Christmas and New Year. But in comparison to where you last saw it, I, I, th I don't think I've done too bad at all. Um, so we've got pretty much, I mean, it's almost a completed block. Almost, she says. I mean, maybe I should, I should sit and do some of this this evening to make it a completed block. So I've got this little bit here that needs doing. I've got a little bit here that needs doing. There's a little more at the bottom here that needs doing. And then it's just filling in these, these extra bits. So, yeah. And then that will be a block finish. Now... As you can see, I've got mine in a Q-snap, she says, with the little dog hair attached. Thanks, bonbons. Um, I've got mine in a little Q-snap because, unfortunately, I am not that person that can stitch in hand. I've tried, and it's impossible. And the only snag that I have with this is I tend to find that when I'm, when I'm stitching like this, it's like some of this sometimes gets in the way of what I'm stitching. Um... So I'm trying to work a way sort of to tuck it and, and sort of clip it to the Q-snap so that I have like open space here, which works at the moment because I'm in the top left-hand corner. Um, how it transpires as I go further down, I do not know because, yeah, with all this extra fabric, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to manage it all once I get into like the middle blocks. But I will play that bit by ear. But this is a great project to work on when it's cold because I use it as a blankie and it just sort of lays over me. In the summer months, I can't imagine that this is going to come out apart from if it's called for as part of my whip go, then I'll need to grin and bear it. But for the most part, I think this is going to be more for when it's cold or colder months or in the evenings if I get a bit chilly and I'm happy to have something quite so big sat on my lap. Um, this is going to be that project. Now, I have had a lot of questions about where to get this. I purchased this as a kit. Um, I got mine from the Nimble Thimble in Wales when I was up there for the Wrexham retreat. I got it as a kit, as in I got this chart and the linen only, um, which is the 18 count fireside, which comes pre-gridded like this. And I think that cost me £78. And then the only thing that I had to buy on top of that was the DMC threads. It calls for normal DMC threads. Um, there is quite a few of them. Um, and this one is stitched using four strands. So the beauty about stitching on this 18 count fireside linen is you're still stitching over two like you would on linen. But because it's so big and you're using four strands, you can still do it with a loop start, the same as you would with the two strands. So you just basically get two strands and fold those in half and use it as a loop start method. So I do love that part about it. Um, all of the back stitch, which I haven't done any yet because that none has come up. But when I do get to the back stitch, the back stitch calls for two strands. So again, super easy. I can do it as a loop start back stitch. Um, but for those of you that were asking the question as to where you can get it from, like I say, the Nimble Thimble are doing it as a kit. Or we're doing it as a kit. I think she's got some other ones as well that she's doing as kits. So you can go onto her website. I'll put a link to the website down below in the description box for you. Uh, but yeah, absolutely loved stitching on that. And like I say, the fact that I'm nearly done with block one, I should really just throw another hour or so at it one evening this week um, and get it done. I mean, I could, I could take it away with me whilst I'm up up in crew this coming week that might be an option it's just it's quite a big thing to be carrying around with me but it is super easy to stitch on um you don't you definitely don't need any magnification next up i have my little princess duck it's artwork by gordon fitchett and it's charted by heaven and earth design this one i haven't had it out in a 
quite a while, if I'm completely honest with you. And here is where I've got to. Now, this one is being stitched on, she says. What is it being stitched on? So this one is being stitched on a 28 count Lugana in the colorway Cute by Fortnite Fabrics. And it, this is the first time that I am doing a sort of full coverage design on a non-gridded fabric, which I have found has come with its challenges for me personally, but that, that's just me. That's not anybody else, that is just a me thing. Um, but I don't think we've done too bad at all. I don't know what percentage I've got it to on the pattern keeper. Um, I don't think I had it written down where I was at. So I will log it once I get this bit done. Um, once I get off of this recording, I will log it somewhere so that I know where we was at last time. And then when you next see it, I'll be able to tell you how much more percentage wise I have stitched on it. But what I'm trying to do, because it's not a gridded fabric, and I do really struggle if there's no 10 by 10 blocks, I'm still trying to stitch it in my block stitching. However, I've got this bit down here. So what I did was I, I picked a nice big bit of stitching to get it started, and then worked my way up to the top so that I was definitely in the right place. Then I started doing my 10 by 10 blocks. So you can see here that this bit here is a 10 by 10 block. There's a little bit extra there, but that's just a little bit extra from the side because his head cuts off there. This is the next 10 by 10 block. This is the next 10 by 10 block and I'm just working on this 10 by 10 block. I've just got to finish this and finish this section here. And hopefully the further down the design that I get, the more I'll be able to e easily see where my 10 by 10 blocks are because they're my reference points. And without the grids, I do get a little bit lost in it all. So yeah, but I needed to start somewhere so that I could work my way up to the top. Um, that I, I wanted like a big bit of stitching to get it started. So so yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy with that. More than happy with that. But like I say, the whole knot stitching this on a gridded fabric. What, why it's any different to anything else that I stitch on, I do not know. So this one is being stitched two over one tenth stitch. But I've had a ball with it, I'll be honest. I have absolutely loved stitching on this. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say other than Although I found the not having grids quite challenging, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself stitching on it and watching it come to life. So, so yeah, more than more than happy with that. So, like I say, so Gordon, the Gordon Fitchy artwork, uh, little princess duck, has had five days worth of stitching. But they're like evenings, weekends. Um, whether I get any more stitched on that, I, I would like to finish that last bit of that block so that I've got that 10 by 10 block finished and then I'll put it away. So maybe I'll do that this evening. That might be a good thing to do this evening as well as, you know, put more stitches in the Afghan. You can see where I'm going with this. I want to do this and I want to do that. I am super motivated with my stitching at the moment. Um, so next up, we have my Soda Stitch High Heels Collection number two, I believe it is. And the last time you saw this, I'd completed shoe number two. And this is where we are at now. Now, you're probably thinking, well, what have you done? I've done all of this since we last spoke. So that's the end of the last shoe down here. And I have been stitching on this on the train. So this is the project that is very much a commuting stitch. I only stitch on it on the way into work because I'm always asleep on the way home because I get my cat napping. Um, but yeah, more than happy with the progress on this. So this one, High Heels Collection is being stitched, I think, she says. Let me let me refer. It's being stitched on a 28 count even weave, just in plain white, so that it matches the other High Heel Collections that I've completed. And High Heels Collection, has had nine days or nine mornings of stitching. And I don't think I've done too badly at all. I mean, those flowers, I think, are almost done. I'm ready to backstitch all that. I've just got the greenery and a few extra bits on the greenery, and then I can work my way down to do the shoe. Once I get this shoe completed, this will be a finish, would you believe? So, yeah, I think we're going 
gun ho on the high heels collection but had an absolute blast stitching on that whilst I've been commuting so more than happy with how that's coming along like I say these always the one thing I've noticed with the soda stitch is they really come to life the minute you get the back stitch in so they look good like this but once that back stitch goes in on these roses and around the high heel yeah they, they just really pop really pop so we are making a fabulous progress on that one. And like I say, that's really all I've done when I've been going on the train into work. So the next one, the next one that I have been stitching on. Oh, I really struggled to put this down, people. I've got to tell you. So the next up is my Winter White Santa by Mirabilia. I decided after Christmas and it just before just as we was going into the new year i'm like i'm done with the christmas ornaments i don't want to stitch anything else christmas ornament wise but i did want to stitch on something christmasy so i was like you know what winter white santa has been totally neglected somebody thankfully 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 picked up on the fact that there was a portion of the shoulder that i stitched i don't know if i stitched it on a live stream or whether I just stitched it and I showed it to you towards the end of the year. And they was like, Teresa, you do know that that's the wrong colour. You know, you, the bit that you stitched pink. I'll, if it's still in the pictures, you'll see it. I'll, I'll put a, like, a before and after so that you can see. So here he is in all his glory. Now, would you look? Would you look at how much I've actually managed to achieve on him? So about the last time you saw him, I think... What did I have done? I think I had up to about here done so since i have last seen you winter white santa had nine days of stitching in january and i have stitched all of his sleeve all of this the birdie half of this beard and these little bits and pieces over here so if that person hadn't hadn't told me i would have been none the wiser I would, because I, I didn't see it. Even though, you know the whole saying, you can't see the wood through the trees? It was like that. Even though it was completely obvious that it was the wrong colour, I did not see it. Not for the life of me. Didn't see it, not even a little bit. So my Winter White Centre, for reference, is being stitched on a 28 count Lugana in the colourway Tempest by Chromatic Alchemy. And I'm stitching this two over two and his skin has been stitched I think I did that two strands over one tent stitch but look how much I am so so pleased but the problem was even though I had to put him down I didn't want to put him down and even now I keep thinking oh it'd be nice to get him back out again oh you know maybe I should get him back out again because it's still a bit Christmassy and it's not Christmas here but it's still it's still cold and yeah but I've got to say I am I am over the moon with how much I've actually managed to achieve since I last saw you I'm like yay at last he's getting some serious love which he totally deserves and I say that because how old is he oh my he's one of my oldest whips he, well, I say oldest, he's one of my older whips. He has, he was started on the 15th of October, 2017. And that's as far as I've got. Bearing in mind that I've done pretty much all of this just in nine days worth of stitching in January. So it just goes to show sometimes if you've got the time to actually apply the time, I can get quite a lot done when I put my mind to it and I don't get distracted or waylaid or don't, you know, I only get like an hour in the evenings. He got some serious love. But because of that, I'm, I, I really don't want to put him down. So that is where we got with Winter White Santa. Um, is there anything else that I stitched on? No. So that was all of the whips. Like I said, I'm trying to be much more focused on what I do. So... Instead of just doing a couple of days on this and a couple of days on that and then having to show you all of these different whips, but there's only that little bit of this and a little bit of that, I'm trying to make it so that 
I might spend almost two weeks working on a project, but I might actually get some serious progress is the idea. Unless, of course, I get bored. If I get bored, no. If I get bored and I'm done, I'm done. I'll switch out and I'll, I'll go work on something else. That's sort of where I'm at. The only thing that I need to be strict on is my whip go. So if whip go says that I need to stitch five days on a certain project or three days on a certain project, as long as I get that done, everything else is totally flexible and I can do what I like. That's, that's where I'm at. So that is it for as far as what I have stitched on. However, I have done a little more on my Noel blanket crochet. Now, I know not everyone is here to see crochet. It's going to be really quick because I've not really done that much. But I don't know. I know that I showed you one square that I'd done. But since then, I think I told you I'd done the second square and thought I'd shown it to you, but I didn't. And since then, I've been working on another square. So, where have I got to on my Noel blanket? So, I think... Bearing in mind that I am so new to crochet, this is like, you know, never done it before. Didn't really have a clue what I was doing. Um, but I thought I'd give it a go. And I'm so pleased that I did because even though I know it's not perfect, it's far from perfect, I am really quite chuffed with myself that it's it's not, it's not been something that's just one colour and I'm just making like a, a granny square or a blanket out of just rows backwards and forwards. At least it's it, it's got some variety to it. So this is my Christmas tree block that I think I showed you the last time. So you're aware of this. There we go, straighten him up a little bit yeah, with his little wiggles. So this was block number one that I did. And this is the block that I did do that I thought I'd shown you and then when I looked back on my videos, I'm like, do you know what? I never did show them. I told them that I'd finished block two. So this is the next one. There we go. So this is tree number two. Now, there are four trees that are required for this blanket, but I, I done two just so that you know, I knew what I was doing and then I was like, well, I don't want to just do all four and then move on to the next one. So I've done two and I'm going to go back and do two more of these trees um, now that I understand how to do it. So they were the two trees. Then the next blocks was the stockings and there are only two stockings. So I've made a start on the stockings and I have to say... The two trees that I've done so far seemed, for some bizarre reason, to be easier than this stocking has been. Purely because there's like you lose, you lose like um, a stitch in it. It's And every time I got to the end of a row, I ended up with, I was one short. But I've, I've sort of sussed out what was going wrong and fixed it. So this is where I've got to on my little stocking. Now, I might have made a boo-boo here. So this is my finished side where you end all the threads. And um, I did it twice actually without realizing that I'd done it. I've accidentally finished this thread at the front here, which I think is fine because I think I can thread it back through. Um, and I've done exactly the same here again where instead of moving it to the back before I finished the thread, I've accidentally left them on the front. So, yeah. Note to self, on the front side, you're not supposed to be able to see. Now, lots of people that done this chart have all sort of said that they weren't overly happy with the fact that you could see the red through, because you're the type of stitch that you do, you carry the red behind all the other stitches. Um, as part of that, each time you get to the end of like where you switch back to the red, you're supposed to pull it tighter um, to stop the bobbles showing. Now, I didn't do that on a few of them. Um, this one specific, you can really see that I didn't pull it through, um, which has left me with this. But do you know what? I don't care. This is going to be my first ever crochet blanket. And the fact that it's going to come with warts and all, <laughs> I don't mind. I really don't mind. 
but that is where I've got to on my stocking. So yeah, it's for me this is this is like a learning a learning blanket, but will be worthy of sticking on the sofa next year. So two trees. One portion of a stocking, I've, I think I've got one more row and then I think the bobble stitch across the top and that's that's a block done. And like I say, on the design, it only requires two stockings. Um, because I am heading up to crew on Thursday, one good thing, <laughs> there's a good thing here. Um, there are a few people that are really quite good at knitting and crocheting and those sorts of things so the I've I've not done anything with all of these threads at the back like the hangy ones because they need to be woven in or, or like you know you weave them in now because I've never done it and even though that it was shown on the videos how to do it I would rather do that with someone that knows what they're doing so I've decided that whilst I'm at crew I'm going to I mean, the trees are not too bad because the trees don't have that many, they don't have that many finished ends or ends to thread in. Um, but on the stocking, there's a whole lot of them. So I will take this with me um, and ask them if they can show me how to do it so that I know that I'm doing it right. And then, yeah. And also how, how do I get these threads that are supposed to be at the back? from the front back to the back because there, there must be a way I'm sure there is so I'm going to have a word with the ladies and see if they can help me with that but even though they are far from perfect I'm I'm fine with that I mean that that bothers me a little bit this bit here where I didn't I didn't pull the thread through so you, you can see a lot more of that that does bother me a little bit but not overly I think because I'm not a perfectionist with crochet because I'm new at it I don't have any really high expectations. And my squares are not all the same size either. I'm finding that my squares are, are slightly different sizes, like this one's slightly longer. But I am assured that it makes no difference what size my little squares are because once I block them and I stick them all together, they're gonna be fine. And I can block them so that they're all the same size. As that's that's what I hear. So so yeah, so there is a little bit of extra stuff that I've been doing and literally I just do a row here and there and then that's it so I'm not spending really that much time on it but that said I would really like to spend a bit more time on it it's just finding the time as always because at the moment whenever I sit down and I'm sitting there thinking it would be nice to get the crochet out and just do another couple of lines but I do real really still so when people, <laughs> oh, here we go people. So when people sit there and say mindless stitching and we just sit there and stitch, you know like sometimes you can you can pick a project that doesn't really require you to think too much because it's like it comes second nature, especially if it's like a block of colour stitching and it's all one colour. Other than do the outline and make sure that you count's right, you can just sit there and aimlessly, you know, you can watch TV, you can hold a conversation, you can do all of those things whilst you're doing it. Unfortunately, there are certain stitches and certain things that I work on that I don't have that ability where, you know, if I'm, I need to concentrate on what I'm doing because it's likely to go wrong or I'm going to miscount or I'm, I'm not going to read what I'm supposed to be doing correctly. So when I listen to people talking on floss tube and people that are multi-crafters where they do stitching, they do knitting and they do crochet, a lot of them will sit there and say, if I'm tired and my eyes are too strained, then I'll go to my, you know, my crochet because it's monotonous. It's, you know, it's easy, easy stitching. But I'm like, for me, crochet is still not that easy. I still have to spend a lot of time counting. So I have to count and then go across the next colour and then count and then, and then, and then at the end of each row, count to make sure that I didn't miss any, any stitches because it still doesn't come second nature. I can't look up while I'm doing it because I have to really look at what I'm doing. I don't, I I'm not one of these people that can feel it yet, but then I'm not experienced enough at that. So, so again, this is one of those things where it has to be something on the telly where I'm happy to just listen and not look and also switch my brain off and do my counting. So there's still a lot of concentration that's required for my, 
for my crochet, unfortunately. But that's fine. That's fine. So, like I say, this isn't sort of mindless stitching for me or mindless, like some, an activity that doesn't require a bit of brain power. I still have to use a lot of brain power because I'm so new at it. So, there you go. That is what I've managed to achieve, let's say, as far as my stitching and my crochet is concerned. Now, what else to tell you? What else to tell you? So for my whip go, my whip go for January, we, we did fine. We completed. So the two numbers that were called um, was the number nine. So for me, that was two days of organizing. And number 22, which was five days on a fancy lady, man, mermaid, merman. Um, the fancy man mermaid was actually winter white santa and like i say i really didn't want to put him down so so he was my he was my five days as part of my whip go for january and then the organizing days i can't believe that i've actually i'm, I'm sticking to it so organizing for two days so i finally sorted all of the bobbin threads so all of the threads that i had that were bobbinated i have now gone through my boxes over here which is my entire dmc on the pip and chip uh, and they're all thread drops so what i did was i went through all of my bobbins and any that were missing any that didn't already have stuff in i have put them into the full storage and then everything that's left over because i'm only putting one skein onto the the floss chips on here Everything else that is bobbinated or on thread drops or, or whatever, I have basically got a, a storage of overflow. So here it is. Here's my storage of overflow. And what I decided to do was I don't like to rob one project to put it into another project because when it then comes to switching out i will never remember to take that thread back out and put it back where it came from so i always pull the threads for each project and have them separate from my dmc storage and if that means that i have five projects that have the same color i will have five skeins out for each of those projects so that each project has its own amount now the way that i decided i was going to do mine because i've got lots of different you know, I've got skeins of a thread. I've got overflow of skeins and bobbins of the same colour that is in the boxes. So what I did is I bagged up and I put the numbers. So this is in the 100s. So everything in the 100s. These are the overflow bobbins and the overflow skeins that I've got. Because I don't need to put one onto my main DMC storage because I already have a skein on there. So I've organised it. So they're all in number order and they're all put together. Now I haven't put what one's a skein, what one is a whatever. And then in the box, I went through and I've marked off on here what I had. Now, at first, I was thinking I could work from paper, but then I was thinking, do you know what? Most of the time, most of the time when I'm deciding that I'm going to kit up another project and order the threads and all of that, I will do when I'm on the train or I will do when I'm at work, like in my lunch break, those types of times. Because the last thing I want to do is sit here kitting something up when that's my stitchy time or my family time or my dog walking time. So... I decided that I used to always track all of my threads on my X Stitch app. So let me show you. I apologize, the radio. So the S X Stitch Plus app, she says. So hold up, let me see if I can do this overhead. So this is the app here, the X Stitch Plus app. There we go. And then at the bottom, you can see I've got infantry. So in my infantry, I can go to my threads 
and on here I've got all of the different threads. So what I've done for my DMC cottons. So DMC and it is the cottons. So under here, what I did, I have every single every single skein that is in the actual boxes like my main my main set is marked as number 1 any threads on here that have more than one so like this one 15156 one, has got two so i know that i've got one for everything because i have a full set of dmc so everything with a one on i know i only have one skein which is in my main storage everything that's got more than one i can go to these baggies and i can pull the skein out from here now i know what you're thinking it's like well what happens when you pull something well what i'm doing now is i now know exactly what i've got of what Every time I pull a skein for a project that I'm kitting up, I am taking one off of this app. So because I'm pulling it, it's going to be used in a project, I delete one. So I still, you know, I'm only taking one off as if I'm taking one from stock. So instead of having two, I've now got one. So I need to reflect that I've only got one available. So then whilst it's with the project, it's getting all of its love, it's getting stitched when I get to the end of a project and you end up with sort of, you know, you end up with some skeins that have got, you know, almost a whole skein left and, and some that have only got half a skein left. And then you have some where you use almost most of it, but not all of it. So in that scenario, the way that I've decided to work it is if, if I get half a skein or more back from the project that is finished, I will put it onto the storage bobbin. So as example, so when I finish Winter White Santa, I will end up with some skeins that have got more than half or half or more because it only required a small amount of that color. So what I will do, I will pull all that thread, I will put it onto my main storage here and I will mark it on my DMC app or on, on the XStitch app, I will add it as a skein back in. So that that way, it's the equivalent of I've got more than one. So there's, there's definitely more than one skein. It might only be one and a half or one and three quarters, um, but either way, it's more than one. So I will add a number one back into here to make it two skeins. If it's less than half a skein, then I will put it back onto there, but I won't mark it as another skein, if you see my point. Because if it's less than half, chances are most things that I pull the colours for will need at least half a skein. I know that that's, that's not always strictly true, but the fact that sometimes I will be pulling, you know, not a whole skein off of these because mostly these this is for a full set. But if I'm only going to need, I don't know, half a skein, I'll take it off of there, but then I will order another skein so that it has a full skein back on it. Anything in there that looks like it's got more than one skein, I can just take a few, a few strands of that, um, a few strands of six that being, um, and I will know that I still have some left. So. A lot of people wonder how, you know, what's the purpose of having a full set of DMC if you're not intending to use them? I will use them, but I will do it so that if there's a smaller project and it only needs, you know, half a skein, I'll pull half a skein off of my main DMC and I'll order another skein in. The beauty of the, the pip and chip is when I pull the boxes out and I look inside, I can easily see if I've got a lot of that colour or actually it's looking really thin, in which case if it looks really thin, I'll order another skein. But the beauty of being able to do this is where I'm kitting up now, I will know that if I've got more than one on here, I know that I don't need to order it at all because if it's not in there, it's in this box here.
So there's a method to the madness. And that way I don't keep buying more skeins of floss when I don't need them. Because sometimes in the past I have been known to just, I decide I'm going to stitch on a new project. Rather than, you know, go through that tediousness of look through there, then look through the bobbins, then look through my additional skeins. Because that's what I've got. I mean, I've got a whole drawer of additional skeins. And I had at least two drawers of bobbinated and then I had my full set of DMC and it was just like I gave up in the end because to keep going through them and sort through them they weren't really in great order I would spend ages just trying to find a colour so at least this way if it says more than one I will know to go to the bag here and I'll only need to go through a small a small bag to find it and if it's only got a one, but I want to make a quick start on the project, I can go to the box, I can take half the skein and know that I need to order another skein of that colour. It's, it's a much easier way. And I'm finding that the more organised I am, the easier it is to be thinking, oh, I've run out of that colour and I'll just look on the app and I'll be like, oh, I've only got one skein. So I'll just go straight to my storage box and pull a couple of strands and then I will go and order another another skein of that. It's a method that I think will work for me. The only bit that I've got to remember to do is to update the app as and when I finish with the threads and if I order a new thread and make sure that I add it to here. Um, each time that I pull a thread for a project, like I say, I will take it off of here so that that way I don't end up start looking through this box if it says I've got more than one, in an actual fact, I don't because I used it for a previous project. Um, so the whole backwards and forwards will mean that I need to add and take away a lot of skeins here and there where I need to. But it will make it so that I don't just keep randomly going and buying skeins of colours. And then, you know, two or three weeks later, I stumble across, you know, two skeins of the same colour. And I'm like, why did I need to buy that? Because that's where it had got to. I was so disorganised. So being organised is helping and having that organisation on my whip go has been, yeah. It's already it's already saved me time just to spend time organising it. It's managed to save me time when I'm looking for the colours. So that was my whole January. So January basically was two days of thread sorting, which I did on a weekend, which was great because I had the whole weekend doing it. And yeah, and you know when you get that little satisfaction that you've done something worthy of your time other than just sit there and stitch. I've actually, the organisation had purpose, it had meaning and it made, it was it was heading me in the right direction. Um, so I did that and then obviously the other number that was called was my Winter White Santa to get five days of stitching on him and get so much done, I was I was over the moon. So January, I completed my whip go. So they all got marked off lovely. Um, February's numbers that have been called. So are number three. And my options are, I have four days on a sampler is my option. Um, so I've got the option of four samplers. I've got tap dancer, I've got song of a nightingale i've got halloween quaker and i've also got a new start which i was supposed to have started on the 26th and i didn't and that was the quaker flag i didn't start it i have got the threads um i have decided that the main dark color that outlines the lines i think i'm going to do it in a chronic so i need to order that but i'm going to do it in like a yeah and rather than going with the called for colors I've actually pulled my own colours. But once I get stitching on that, then I will show it to you. So I may start the Quaker flag whilst I'm away and have it as a new start. Or alternatively, I'm thinking I might try and take Tap Dancer with me for my weekend away because that is a really good, easy stitching. Um, so yeah, so I'm thinking either tap dancer because it will be a super easy, mindless bit of stitching when I'm at the stitchy retreat with the ladies. And then the other number that was called for whip go was the number 24, which is three days on something general, which is 
perfectly fine for me because that's my high heels collection. And given that I just need that one last shoe to make that a finish, I think I will focus on that. So like I say, it says it only needs three days because I'm doing it on my commute and I normally commute into London at least three days a week. Um, I don't think I need to worry too much about that. I really don't. Um, what else to tell you? So in February and March, it looks like there might be some more house DIY people. I know. We, we said after we'd done the loft conversion that by doing the loft conversion and cutting a great big hole in the ceiling downstairs and then putting the stairs in that we was going to have to refresh downstairs. Um, given that there was a, a couple of little accidents that things got dropped and the floor tiles got broke um, and the fact that I absolutely fell out of love with my floor tiles because they're white and they've got white grout and they're hard to keep clean and it's just a nightmare with two small dogs that run around like banshees um we have decided that since as we're going to decorate everything needs repainting that but we're going to put our new floor but the new floor of course is in the biggest room of the house which is the entire hallway the kitchen the dining room the lounge and the utility room are all like one floor that's a whole lot of square footage of, of tiles, which is going to be a pig to get up because some of it is on a concrete slab from the extension. Other areas won't be so difficult to get up because they're on an old floorboard system, so they'll lift really easily. But the ones that are in the, the living room, um, the living room and the utility room are going to be, it's going to be awful. It's going to be awful, but it will be worth it. But I'm going to paint throughout give everything a refresh because the tiles are coming up skirting boards need to come off so yeah um so although i'm sitting there saying i'm going to do all these things with my stitching of course my stitching is going to have to come in here and come right out the way and because we do it all ourselves my time might be limited so it may be that i only get whatever i get done on the train and whatever my whip go says in february but we will see. We will see whether husband decides to pull his finger out and make a start. Because I've been like, are we going to do this? Are we doing this? And he's the one that's dragging his feet. Because I'm like, if we're doing it, it needs to be done before the racing season starts and before the garden season starts. I said, I am not doing it then. I said, so it needs to be done early in the year. February, March are the obvious times to do it. I think he's just, he doesn't want to do it. So limited stitchy time and limited me time. But once it's done, it will be so worth it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to having it done and finished, I have to say. Right, finally, what to show you. I have haul, people. I have haul. So whilst I was at the Essex Needles Stitch Day, I did get some goodies. For the life of me, I can't find two of the goodies because I think I, think I put them somewhere and for, I cannot find them. Um... When I do, I'll add them to my my haul for next month, I think, because they're here somewhere. It's just a case of where. <laughs> so whilst I was at the retreat, um, I say retreat, the stitch day, some lovely, lovely people done some gifts for me. One of the first gifts that I got, she we talked about West Green Loft Yarns. Um, they they do yarn, they do floss, and they do fabrics of the month now. So um, she was saying how lovely their wool was because obviously I was only sort of like looking at the, the stitching stuff. But now that I'm getting into the crochet, um, she was like, oh, some of their yarns are, are lovely. Well, she gifted me this yarn. So this is, this is West Green Loft Yarns, and this is um, a classic soft... No, classic sock in the colourway Snow Rose, cold wash, air dry, 100 grams. Would you look at that? Look at the colours in that. In fact, let me do it the overhead camera because you'll get a better feel for the colour. But look at that. How beautiful is that yarn? Love, love, love. Love, 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 people. What can I say? You know when it's like... I know I didn't do very well with my socks because I did one and a one and a half sock. But do you know what? If I ever consider going back and doing socks, I think... I mean, I don't know if you can crochet socks. Can you crochet socks? 
I might need to find out because I do seem to be doing better with the crocheting than I am the knitting. If I can crochet socks, then maybe I can use this and I can crochet myself some socks with this because that is gorgeous. So thank you so, so much for that. Um, what else did I get gifted to me? So also, Jeanette done um, as part of our, I can't remember if it was the raffle. No, it wasn't the raffle. It was the raffle. She put in one of the hands across the seat tote bags at, at one of our last retreats and I was absolutely gutted. In fact, everyone, everyone was gunning for this bag and hoping that they were going to get it. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. And because I put my whole, you know, lady pout face on, like, I wanted that bag. Because I did that, I think she must have felt sorry for me because she's actually gifted me another one. She is a lovely, lovely lady and she loves her samplers. And she has loads of these bags and she kindly, very kindly gifted me this one and gave it to me in January. Would you look at that bag? It's lovely. And I love these tote type bags because they're, they're so handy. Like when I go to my stitching retreats and I need to put like my projects in, these are the like most handiest thing ever. But how lovely is that? Would you look at that? Let me put it down so you can see it on the overhead. It is gorgeous. And this is Martha. What is it? Martha. I'll let you read it rather than me saying it. But it's it's basically the bag of this design. But now I've seen it like this. You know when you're sort of sitting there going, oh, I think that would be a lovely stitch. I mean, look at that beautiful bird. Would you look at that? So... Like I say, so this is a hands across the sea bag, tote bag, and Jeanette Lover gifted me that. I love it. I love it. I've had it in my in my special little um, wicker basket so that I could show it to you. But I really wanted to use it, but I couldn't use it because I knew that if it came out the wicker basket, I would forget to mention it on this video. So there was that. Um, what else did I get? Um, I also got a new project bag from Handmade by Susie. Would you look at this? It's got this lovely vinyl with hearts on it. Hold up. There's my threads. Oh, there's my threads for my Quaker, my Quaker uh, flag I was going to do. But yeah, would you look? It's got like hearts on the vinyl. It's got this beautiful fabric on the inside. And then it's got this lovely fabric on the back. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. I did get two other, the two other objects that I was talking about that I can't find for the life of me um, are also from Handmade by Susie, but I haven't, I can't find them. They're here somewhere. But as soon as I find them, then I will share them with you. Whilst I'm showing you, so my Quaker flag, I decided that I'm not going to go for the called for colours. I was going to pick my own. So I made a decision, an executive decision, she says. Um, and I decided to change up from DMC to these. So these are Gentle Arts. And these are the colours that I decided to go with. So the darker blue, I'm going to go with Midnight. The red, I'm going with Buckeye Scarlet. The paler colour, I'm going with Slate. And then for the real, real dark navy colour, that is basically the dividers in, in, in the blocks, I'm going to use... Um, a crinic, like a, a, a sparkly one, um, but in a really dark navy. Um, but I need to order that from Lakeside Needle, Lakeside Needle Crafts, I think. I think it's the only place that I've found it so far. Um, unless I find it somewhere else, then I will look there as well. But they're they're the colours that I've decided for my for my flag, rather than just going with the DMCs. So. I got two skeins of each to get me started and then if I need more then I can. So there's those. What else have I got? So Fabric of the Month Club. I'm in two now. 
I'm in the Chromatic Alchemy and I decided that rather than going with my my usual go-to 25 and 28 count, I made the decision that I was going to start trying some slightly different counts and I have got myself some even weave 32 count. Um, here's the colour. And it's beautiful. It's a very, very lovely blue. I've left it in its packet for now because literally I got, I got it through the post and, and then just threw it into my wicker basket so that I didn't forget to show it to you. So that is the first Fabric of the Month Club. Love that. You can think of lots of projects that that can go on. And then my first ever, I love this, I love this. My first ever fabric of the month from West Loft Yarns has come, is it? West Green Loft, yeah, West Green Loft Yarns. I'm gonna have to remember that. I don't know why my brain can't, can't accept it, but it's turned up, here it is in its lovely little packaging, it says thank you. Would you look at this fabric? I love, I love that. Here we go. Hand dyed linen. So what one is this called? So this is, it's just January 2024 club. It's a 28 count. I decided to go with 28 count linen. Love the color. It's like a nice, it's, it's just such a lovely color have to say um, and this one is in the colorway vintage lace perfect perfect neutral for me love love can't wait for February's one now so but I've decided to go with a 28 count linen from there because I have lots of 28 count even weave but not very much on the linen side and a lot of the things that I'm stitching I'm actually quite liking the linen so so yeah so I have that. That one's got to go in the cupboard with all the others. But that is the start. So that's January's one. So yeah, like I say, can't wait to see what February is now. So I have that. Um, then what else have I got to show you? So I think the only thing remaining is, yeah, Christmas presents, people. So would you believe it that at last... I got Christmas presents that are stitchy related. It's been a long time since anyone bought me any stitchy stuff because they're like, well, you don't need any more stitchy stuff, Teresa, because you have plenty. You have, you know, stash. But you know as well as I do, there's never enough stash in our lives. So this is what I got for Christmas. So for Christmas, we got Olivia the Forest Witch. Now, I can't remember whether this came as my secret Santa. Or... Whether... I think this might have been my secret Santa. So you may have already seen this. But if not, here it is. Or it may have been a Christmas present. I'm, 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 losing, I'm losing what I got for what. So these are definitely Christmas presents. So I've got the Winter Garden by Shepherd's Bush. Love that, love. Nice small design. See how I'm liking some of these smaller things? Of course, this isn't small. So this is the Holiday Quaker by Leela Studio. But I really like that one. And I've seen so many people stitch it that I'm like, I want that one. Because I just love, I just love him flying through the sky. So, and the little houses and yeah. So I've got that one. And then I have the Shepherd's Bush Spring Garden. Again, nice small one. Comes with the buttons at the back. Oh, can't show you the chart. Nearly showed you the chart there and I'll have to see if I can edit that out. Love that. I've also got the Summer Garden from Shepherd's Bush. And again, she says I need to do this. It's got all of the buttons at the back. And finally, the drawn thread, the winter jumble. Which I think is just one 
So I think it's like an ABC thing. So I think there's there's more than one. But this one is the Winter Jumble. Um, and it comes with the threads and the fabric. So that one's like a kit. Love, 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 love. So there we go. And then the only other thing that I've got here, and I might as well just show it to you. So for my Quaker... Quaker flag I decided I didn't want to stitch it on anything high count I wanted it easy to stitch and I made the executive decision that I was going to go on a sparkly fabric so I ordered this from 123 stitch it's a half yard of 28 count opalescent lugana it's white and it's just got little sparkles in it but I was like I needed some sparkle in my life and it is a lot of fabric because because I'm doing it on a 28 count, I think this is going to turn into a bit of a beast. But you can see how much sparkle it's got. Absolutely love that. So I got that for my flag. So as example, she says, if I put the colours on. So these are the threads. I think it's going to look lovely. I think it's going to look absolutely divine. And like I say, there's going to be some sparkle from some Krynik in a really dark navy. For the dividing love 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 so there we go people there we go you know everything you know all the things that i've done all the things that i've got all the things that i'm going to do and this video is done now i've just got to edit it and hope that i don't have to cut loads of stuff out because yeah the editing is what takes the most amount of time. So thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for listening to me waffle on as usual. Um, if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed this video and you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the little subscribe button. Give me a little thumbs up to let me know you like it. And until next time, people, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful, stitchy February um, and do all the things. I'll be back to see exactly how much I get done at the end of February. So until next time, people, bye-bye for now.